Hey everybody, Bearded Gentleman here. Um, this is not the video that I was expecting would be the next one to go up here on the channel, uh, but given some of the events that we've seen here recently in the last few days, um, I feel like we need to have a talk. And I feel like I feel like there's some things here that I need to say, and I hope you listen. You may not agree with everything I say here, but God damn, I hope you listen. And um, I'm going to warn you in advance, there's going to be some foul language in this video, because I'm not going to be able to hold back. So, a background. The last few weeks have seen a absolutely crazy amount of civil unrest in this country, like which I've never seen in my lifetime before. Um, I've, I've heard stories. I, heard, I read in history books about some of the, well, the 1960s, some of the things that happened there, the big civil rights movement, Martin Luther King. Junior, that type of thing. Um, but this is the first time in my lifetime that I'm seeing this level of anger, frustration, racism, and bigotry, ignorance, just downright disgusting behavior. So Bubba Wallace is the only African-American driver in NASCAR. You know I'm a huge NASCAR fan. Bubba's a driver that I've rooted for for quite some time. I've been a fan of his. And he's decided to be more outspoken over the last few weeks. Before the race at Atlanta, he wore an I Can't Breathe shirt in relation to both George Floyd and Eric Garner, who was murdered a few years ago by New York City police officers. And um, he's made his voice very clear and very, very loud. Uh, he's talked about some of the horrific things that have happened to him in his life that he hasn't really talked about much before. Getting pulled over, get, having cut, having cops pull their guns on him. Having cops ask him, are you sure you can afford this, Lexus? Son, are you sure you can afford this? Son, I think there's a lot of drugs that pass through this area, so we're going to go ahead and need you to step out of the vehicle. We're going to search your vehicle. All because of the color of his skin. So he's been very outspoken. He was so outspoken about how uncomfortable a very large chunk of the African-American population feels when they see the rebel flag being flown, that NASCAR finally decided enough is enough, and they decided to ban the Confederate flag on all NASCAR properties, full stop, end of story, period. And that was not exactly met very well by a lot of the racists in the NASCAR fan base. And yes, there's still a lot of racist assholes in the NASCAR fan base. I hate to say it, it's, it's definitely not all of them. It's definitely not the majority of them. I think the majority of us are very well-intentioned, good people. But there's a lot of racist motherfuckers out there still. And they've used the last few weeks to cast insane amounts of hate to Bubba Wallace and NASCAR. So we get to Talladega this weekend. It's in the heart of Alabama. One of the places that on the on the yearly tour, when fans were allowed at all the races, this is one of the places you'd see the most Rebel flags. They're banned now. So Saturday, before uh, the ARCA and Xfinity races, uh, there were groups that were intentionally trying to block all the roads leading in and out of the racetrack with their vehicles that had the largest Rebel flags they could find flying from those vehicles. NASCAR banned that flag, and damn it, they wanted you to see it. So they plugged up all the roads all around the speedway. Sunday, before the race, there was an airplane flying around. An airplane that was paid for by the Sons of the Confederacy, a group that has long-standing ties to the KKK. They're flying an airplane around over the racetrack. Defund NASCAR. Kind of a trying to make fun of the defund the police movement that uh, that's happening right now in the country. So tensions are really high going into Talladega. We're not sure how this is going to play out. So Sunday, during the rain delay or possibly after the rain out, or I'm not sure exactly what the time frame was on it, one of the crew members for Bubba Wallace's team, they're walking into the garage, and he notices that the rope to pull the door down has a noose tied in the end of it. None of them had seen that before. None of them had paid attention. But now it caught his eye. He's like, 
So by the reports that I'm seeing, he reported it to the crew chief, who then went and reported it to NASCAR. NASCAR immediately launched an investigation. They took a super quick look at the other garages around and saw no other ropes that were tied in that manner at the garages around Bubba's garage. So, of course, with tensions already being at their peak, everyone thinks the worst. NASCAR comes out with a public statement saying, a noose was found, we will not tolerate this hatred, etc., etc. Of course, the media takes off and runs with it. Noose tied in garage of black NASCAR drivers. We're all thinking the worst. We're thinking that somebody, either within NASCAR, within a team, or within the track staff, has intentionally put a symbol in Bubba's garage, a symbol that has been used to murder hundreds of thousands of black people over the last 150 years. And now Bubba's garage has one. Nobody else's does. Bubba's does. So, of course, everyone immediately thinks the worst. Race goes on on Monday. An absolutely amazing outpouring of emotion before the race. Not going not gonna to lie, I cried. Watching them push Bubba's car up to the front of the grid. Watching every single driver stand around Bubba and rally around him. Watching Richard Petty put his arm around him, give him a hug. It was absolutely one of the most emotional things I've ever seen in my life. I cried watching that. Race went off without a hitch. The race was fantastic yesterday. Bubba led some laps. His best friend, Ryan Blaney, ended up winning the race. <sighs> okay, we got through the race now. What the hell happened with that fucking noose? FBI comes out today with their conclusions. And it turns out that this was all just a really, really unfortunate circumstance and misunderstanding. Well, very, very unfortunate coincidence. I have a hunch as to what happened. Um, the garages were just built in October of last year. They're all new garages. Uh, my hunch, and this is just pure speculation on my part, I wonder if at that garage they got to the end of the roll of the rope that they were using for the pull-downs on the doors. They got to the end of the roll, there was a little extra left on it, so they just left it. Somebody came along, hey, man, that's kind of dragging on the ground. They tied it up. Maybe. I don't know. But either way, somebody tied it up last fall. Um, they've gone back now and they've seen videos and pictures. Ryan Blaney was in that garage last fall. And it's tied like a noose. For whatever reason, that one's tied like a noose. No one can really explain why. Um, I have seen other... I've seen a few fans show pictures from when they were inside the uh, garage area last fall. There might have been a couple of others that had r ropes tied like that at the end. But the vast majority of them did not. That is undisputable. The overwhelming majority of those ropes were not tied like that. They were just straight ropes. Maybe there was only one. There might have been three or four. I'm not sure on the exact number. NASCAR says that as of this weekend, that was the only one that was tied like that. I've seen some fans say that they think that they remember seeing a couple tied like that back in uh, October of last year. But thankfully, the, wor the thing that we feared the worst is not true. There's not somebody in the garage area that decided to... Uh, put up a symbol of murdering a black person in a black NASCAR driver's garage. Thank God. Thank God we're not in that situation. So on one hand, we're breathing a sigh of relief. But on the other hand, we've taken 20 steps backwards now. We've made a bunch of movement forwards, and I think we just blew up a lot of it because of the way that this was handled. Emotions are, are high right now. I'm extremely emotional about all this right now. Um, when I saw what statements were coming out on Sunday night, I decided to paint a new car uh, for iRacing. I decided to paint this car. I decided to take away the Corsair car that I've been running in the uh, the ARCA cars. I decided to paint this one. Kind of inspired by Bubba's Martinsville car. Got the compassion, love, understanding on the hood. I could not find um, the uh, the joined hands logo, so I found this logo here of a of a raised fist on Bubba's website. I decided to use that. Black Lives Matter on the quarter panel, just like his Martinsville car. The big peace symbol, just like on the Martinsville car. Passion, love, understanding on the rear bumper, just like the Martinsville car. So, 
I painted up that car, and I ran our league race last night. And uh, it was at Talladega, funny enough. And just for myself, I wanted to go put that in victory lane. I love racing Talladega. I was confident going into last night I could win that race. I'm riding around. We're going to wait until the end of the race. I don't try to do anything stupid early on. It was like an 86-lap race. I do not do anything too stupid. Riding around at the back of the pack. There's a lap car that I've had issues with every single week so far because, quite frankly, he's an idiot driver. He doesn't he, he doesn't know what he's doing. Um, the, the whole pack is passing this guy. I back way off. I'm afraid he's going to cause a big wreck. Back way off. Pack gets by him. Car in front of me gets by him. I'm almost past him. He hangs a dead left and absolutely clobbers me. Destroys my car. Takes me out of the race. And I absolutely raged on him. I felt it was 1,000% intentional. I'm driving this car that I stayed up till 6 o'clock in the morning. Painting this car because I want this car to look good. I want. I have a message that I want that I am not afraid to stand on the rooftops and shout. And I wanted to put this car in victory lane. And this guy just absolutely destroyed me what I felt on purpose. I felt it was because of the paint scheme. I honestly thought it was because of the paint scheme. Now, thankfully, I've had a night to sleep on it. I've gone back and I've looked at a couple of different angles of it. He's just an idiot driver. He got in the wall and had the wheel cranked as hard to the left as he could. And he just came off the wall as I was going by. So, it, he did not turn intentionally into me. He's just a shitty driver. But last night, my my immediate instant reaction was the worst. This guy, I just painted this car. This guy just took me out on purpose because of this paint scheme. That was, that was what my reaction was. Thankfully, turned out to not really be the case. But we're all we're all on high emotions right now. So, come to this news today, and, um, sorry, cat's messing with me here, and it turns out, this really shitty coincidence, and instead of just being able to say, well, we cleared that, instead, now all the knuckle fucks who have been saying ridiculously hateful things about Bubba before, we just added him a whole new whole new batch of ammunition and guess what they're shooting it all back at us now and it pisses me off here's a couple of examples this is on twitter right now abba wallace and jesse smollett represent everything that's wrong with today's woke culture they're so obsessed and you can't spell they're right uh, with wanting to be the victim martyrs, they end up hurting the very social causes. Bubba Smollett, Bubba Wallace hoax, Bubba hoax. What the fuck? You got... Mark Dice. He, he, he's a real piece of work. You helped spread another hoax, bro. Character has nothing to do with race. You screwed the pooch. There's just constant. This guy, of course, American flags. Hey, oh, I'm American. Watch this. Bubba Smollett went on CNN in the view crying about the fake news. And said other people who questioned the story were simple minded. He's a race baiting hustler looking for his 15. Oh, this is. Look at this. Trending now on Twitter. Bubba Smollett and fake news. For Bubba Wall's hate hoax exposed. There's a picture of Jesse Smollett's face on Bubba's face. Or on Bubba's body. I bet this is a box office fail. Bubba Smollett, fake news, NASCAR hoax. Camille Hill, you suck. You always have fake news.
Plan Hood found a bubble while his hotel room turns out to be a pillowcase. It, this... What the fuck did we just accomplish here? Bubba's going to get even more hate than he was already getting because of this. And it's complete bullshit. This is not fair to Bubba at all. Bubba wasn't even in the fucking garage area. He had nothing to do with this. He didn't know anything was going on until the president of NASCAR went to his motorhome, motor coach, and said, hey, we've got a problem. So now everything positive that we've been building up here has just blown up in our faces. And I guarantee you this is going to be thrown in our faces for as long as we're here. Here's, here's the fucked up part. The worst part now. Bub is the only black driver in NASCAR. Say he comes home from the race next weekend. Say he pulls in his driveway. There literally is a noose hanging from the tree in his front yard. Say there's literally anything. Say there's a burning cross in his front yard. It could literally be the worst things possible. And now the moment he says anything, this is what we're going to get. This is the response we're going to get. From these hateful fucking idiots. We just we just reloaded all their guns for them. Said, here you go, get ready to shoot us again. It pisses me off that we're in this situation again. Everything positive that we've been working on is gone. This this could have been handled so much better. Sorry about the little alert there. This could have been handled so much better. Here's how you should have handled it, NASCAR. I'm pissed at NASCAR right now. I understand that they had to be cautious. They had to be diligent with this situation because they didn't know the scope of, like I said, tensions were high going into this weekend. We didn't know what the ultimate truth was going to be. But you put yourself in a corner here that now you've absolutely fucked up. Here's how you handled it. Here's how you should have handled it, I should say. Sunday night, you come out with a press statement. You don't say, there was a noose in the garage, blah, 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 blah. This hateful, racist person is going to be removed or whatever. I can't remember exactly what the word for word of that statement was. They put themselves in a corner that they shouldn't have. They should have come out instead. Here's how you should have said it. Late this afternoon, NASCAR learned of a possible threat against Bubba Wallace. We have contacted the FBI and all local authorities, and we are cooperating completely to get to the bottom of this. If, there is in, if this is indeed a threat against one of our drivers, we will not stand for this, and the person will be dealt with to the fullest extent possible from the law and will be expelled from life from NASCAR. You can still come out extremely strongly worded statement. But the way that they handled this, they just completely ruined everything positive that we've been going for. I hear, I and I see people trying to, and don't get me wrong, I, I understand those trying to find the positives. The positives are we know now that when people try to fuck with one of the drivers, every other driver has their back. We've seen the sport rally around Bubba and say, we will not stand for this, period. But look where we are here. I, I appreciate everything positive that just came out of this weekend, but I feel like we just lost way more than we gained. And it could have been handled so much better. And it put the entire cause that a lot of us have been pushing for, it, it just set it back, possibly just about to the beginning now. We basically have to start all over now. Because now, literally, these racist, ignorant fucks can say whatever they want. And the moment we try to call them on it, they're going to flip it back on us and say, oh, yeah, it's just like, just like when you said there was that noose in Bubba's garage, huh? They're the worst kind of fucking trolls on the Internet. There's, there's just, there's no getting around it. They are the worst trolls on the Internet. 
but they're also the loudest and they're the most frustrating because they will take everything humanly possible and throw it back in your face to the point that you don't even want to bother anymore. And that's what upsets me the most. I'm still cheering for Bubba. I'm going to root for Bubba for as long as I can. I got a Bubba Wallace shirt on the way right now coming from NASCAR. Coming from NASCAR.com. I bought one Sunday night. Darren, damn to you, I'm going to wear that on stream. But the way this is this has been handled, I hate to say it, but we just... This was absolutely a colossal fuck-up. I cannot say it enough, just how frustrating it, it it is going to be now to try to move forward in the ways that we want to move forward because now we're going to have this thrown back in our face at every humanly possible opportunity. Anyways, guys, that's going to be that. Um, if you guys have stuck around through the whole video, I appreciate it. But We'll get some more regular content going here soon, I promise, guys. And uh, check it, check me out on Twitch right down down here. Um, we'll try to do some we'll do, be doing more some more streams this week sorry I can't talk it's late be doing some more streams here soon definitely check out the streams I appreciate all the support that I've been getting um, but yeah this is the last 72 hours have just felt like what are we doing anyways guys have a good rest of your night um, be good to each other that's something Another Twitch streamer, David Shieldhouse, says at the end of his streams, be good to each other. We need a whole lot more of being good to each other in this world. Being bad to each other is really, really getting old. So be good to each other, guys. Stand up for what you believe in. Don't, don't let this get you down. Keep, keep fighting, pushing for, for what's right. We'll get there eventually. Just this is this is unfortunately kicked us back to the bottom of the stairs again. Have a good night, guys. Thanks for watching.